So what I am going to do in this video is attempt to basically bypass here the phono inputs and turn the phono inputs basically into line in or aux inputs. The person that owns owns has asked me if uh, it was possible to hook up a cell phone directly to the phono inputs and really it's not because well first of all the output from the cell phone is way too high for the phono basically for the phono preamplifier and also because of the equalization that occurs it's what's going to happen is you if you feed in a music directly from your cell phone into this it's going to come out sounding I'd say muddy that's what it should it should come out um, sounding like that so I think what I'm going to do now is take a closer look here and I've located the here the phono IC which is right I think right here where my finger is at and I have a schematic what I'm going to do is basically remove four electrolytic capacitors two are coming into the um, basically phono preamper on the input side and two are on the output side and um, I think I'm going to remove these four basically leave everything in and then what I'm going to do is basically bridge from one end of the capacitor to the other end of the capacitor and then it's going to put me right about at the function switch. So we definitely have to remove this large main board here and that comes out with seven different screws at various points and I did this once before I think for sure the tuning knob has to come out and I think there's back here there's some screws with the antenna but uh, I'm not sure yet so I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling screws and if we look at it from the component side here I see that these two orange capacitors here are starting to come loose here so I got the first two capacitors out it's um where's it at right here we'll see 101 and over here C 102 and the other two capacitors are Here's C112 and here was C111. These are the ones I initially couldn't find and I actually ended up um, desoldering one of the wrong ones over here because I simply read the schematic wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and run wires from I think it's C101 to C111 terminal and C102 to C112. I'm just bypassing the IC and circuitry completely. I'm not yet sure whether I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the where's the dead IC at? Remove the IC and then place jumpers across here. That would probably also work uh, too. I'm going to be going from the negative side, for example, for C112, which uh, I believe is going toward the main amp over. To the negative side of C102 right there you see there's a plus and minus that's where the first wire is and the same with the other um, same with the other side C101 to C111 the negative to the negative so here it is you can see the wires that I ran um, as I said earlier, I'm not sure whether I'm going to take the chip out and just jump her across that. I'm going to go ahead and try this approach here. So I got everything hooked up. Now the main circuit board is um, in the chassis, but it's just laying in there. And I got the, I've hooked up the loudspeakers just temporarily. You can see here the front, it cut, front is not on. And of course, I'm going to be using the up here. You use the same phono switch now when you're using the line. What's now the line in? This is running directly to the from my phone. I got a little adapter. This is 3.5 millimeter to cinch um, RCA cinch adapter. 
and I'm just going to be feeding in some music. You can see down here, I've got to be careful. Right there, that's where I'm coming in, what's normally the phono input. And um, now I am going to go ahead and feed in music for a couple seconds. I think I better turn on the volume. And you see the VU meters right there. So let me go ahead and feed in some music. If I'm lucky, I might be able to leave it like this. Let me go ahead and play some music. Okay, here we go. Nothing coming out. Why is that? Okay, I got to turn it to volume. Hush, not okay, sounds pretty good. I don't. I can't let it run, run longer. The music because of the copyright issues, but. So far, um, I'm going to play a little bit more music. I think I might just be able to leave it like this. It's kind of hokey, but uh, at least now um, the person that owns this, now they can hook up a MP3 player or hook up their phone directly to the phono input. Of course, they can't use a record player now. And finally, I'm feeding in a, a signal from, my, of course, a real audio uh, generator. And I'm using my leader here and I'm feeding in a square wave of a thousand hertz. Uh, I've got the I've got a dummy load hooked up in the back. So it's across the external speaker hookups and here you can take a look at the square wave. That's it right there. And I've only got one probe hooked up across one channel, but if I were to hook up the probe across the other channel, it would be exactly the same. This square wave is not perfect, but on these boom boxes, it's never going to be that way. It's always if I would look if I would hook up the other probe now, the square wave would look exactly the same as this one, and that's just how they. I mean, that's just how they are. You can't. It's not like a a regular hi-fi receiver or an amplifier. It just doesn't. It just doesn't get any better. You can see now. Now I'm going to hit and I'm going to hit the. Move the bass and trouble control. You can see right there I mean, what's happening to the square wave. And I think for now that concludes the video.